everybody. Welcome to my mid-month update for the month of June. I always feel kind of sad at this time of year because I love the summer so much, but I also feel like it's already going by so quickly. I don't know why, but there's something about the summer that just makes me feel more myself. It's hard to explain, but as far as what I'm reading right now, I'm currently reading The Prophet of Edan by Philip Chase. This is book two in the Edan trilogy, and as I've mentioned in a previous video, this one it's the ground running, lots of action, lots of dragon stuff and gore and found family. I feel like it's a really good continuation of book one if you enjoyed that. And by the way, if you want to enjoy the first book, The Way of Edan, and you don't have access to a physical edition, if you have access to an e-reader, the Kindle edition is on sale until June 16th, and I highly recommend taking advantage of that sale. So I am so happy for Philip, and I cannot wait to discuss this with him. I've been sending him messages while I've been reading it because there have been several things I've really appreciated, and it's been fun. It's been a fun time reading this, and alongside that, I've also been chipping away at The Ships of Merrier by Jenny Words. Now, this is the physical edition, which Jenny very kindly gave me, and it's actually a bind-up of two books in the series. So um, we're just right now for the read-along reading book one of this, so The Ships of Merrier, and I'm going to be joined in a discussion with Philip Chase and A.P. Canavan here on my channel, I think in later July to discuss this, and it is taking a while. I am taking my time with it. Um, I don't know if that is honestly the best approach for me with, with this particular series, to read a little bit at a time and read multiple books at once. I think that would work for most people, but for me, I don't know. I think, I actually think I find a little bit more of a flow with this series when I just dedicate all my attention to one book at a time. I'm not sure. I might experiment with it, but I am trying right now to put a little bit more time into it because I did take like a week off, I think last week, or I took several days off from reading the book and then got back into it. But I am looking forward to discussing this with AP and Philip. Um, it is very different than book one. So I'll be talking about that later on as I finish this first book in the arc and uh, really looking forward to it. Aside from that, I also started, but just the very, very beginning, I started Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield for another buddy read. And so I'm buddy reading this with Theo and Alex and Alan. It's really good so far. I know it has a lot of praise. I think it was first published in 1998, if I'm not mistaken. And from what I understand, um, it has held the test of time as far as the praise it's received. And so this is about the epic battle of Thermopylae. And I already love the way that the author approaches it because we're talking to one survivor on the Spartan side and his perspective of how um, the Spartans held up against this huge army of millions. I have a feeling it's actually going to be pretty emotional, honestly. A lot more emotional than I was expecting, even though there's obviously a heavy military focus. I could be wrong about that. I'm very, very early into the book, but I'm looking forward to it and cannot wait to talk with others about it. And then aside from that, two more books to talk about, uh, two audiobooks. So I started a reread on audio of Jade City by Fonda Lee. Now, if you've been around for a while, you might know I did not love Jade City the first time I read it. I read it visually with the library copy back in 2020. Um, I actually buddy read this with Alan from the Library of Alexandria. A lot of people think he hasn't read it, but he did. He read it alongside me. And both of us, I think he liked it a little bit more than I did. I struggled with this book <laughs> and I think a lot of it had to do with expectation at the time. For one thing, something, for some reason I had the expectation it was going to be fast paced and action packed and this might be a way in which my reading taste has changed over time because at that time I think that I preferred, perhaps preferred that kind of book at least at that phase in my reading journey. I don't know, it's kind of confusing to me to figure this all out, to figure out my re reading taste, but I did feel like that was not the type of book it was. And the other thing too was that a lot of people were pitching the book as The Godfather, a fantasy version of The Godfather. And for me, that was setting the bar too high because I love The Godfather movie so, so, so much. So I think that that was the wrong expectation for me personally. 
Um, but I will say that upon reread via audio, the story is working so much better for me than it was the first time I read it. And so some of that might have to do with adjusted expectation. I also think that there are certain things about the way that Fonda Lee writes. So what she does often, what I noticed when I read the book the first time, is that she will interrupt her dialogue sections to give you a lot of exposition and backstory. And then, so a character will ask a question or, or say something to a character. You'll get all this info dump and then the other character finally responds. So an example of this, um, the last chapter I read this in, there was a character, I think it's Lon, who goes to see the Chancellor and the Chancellor's like, what can I do for you? And then we go into this big backstory about Lon's father and grandfather and um, this idea about Jade and about negotiation and this experience from his childhood and how it informs how you need to ask the right questions or right, the right amount, but not ask too much of somebody, like to know how to negotiate, how to make a deal in the right way. And then finally, we get back to the present again, which of course this is related to what's happening in the present, but not. And then finally, he responds to the chancellor. So when I read things like that visually the first time, I felt, I felt like that pulled me out of the story a lot to interrupt the sections of dialogue with those info dumps. I'd rather have sections of dialogue and then exposition if we're gonna do that. But I think it worked better for me via audio for whatever reason. I just found those sections a lot more interesting this time around, but I only got a quarter of the way through the audiobook and then my loan expired. So I will renew the loan. I mean, I did put a hold in again to get the audiobook back. And I know it'll pick up right where I left off when I check it out again. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to getting through the first book again because I am finding it a lot more interesting. I'm finding the family dynamics more interesting. I'm finding the characters more interesting than the first time. Um, just overall, I'm more engaged. And I think that it works via audio because it is urban fantasy. And even though we're in a secondary world, I feel like because it's urban fantasy, it feels kind of like low fantasy and that we have apartment complexes and government buildings, that kind of setting. So it, it feels grounded in that sense. I don't feel like it's pulling me out of the story too much to try to visualize things. So uh, yeah, I'm really I'm impressed so far. We'll see how it goes upon the rest of the reread. Anyhow, aside from that, I also started a nonfiction book, Stolen Focus. And I don't have much to say about this, except that I'm about a quarter of the way through this. It's a nonfiction book about you know, how we've lost our ability to focus and how this is a modern problem. Everything that the author has pulled up as far as research is concerned, in fact, everything he's pulled up so far were things I've heard before. So I haven't actually learned anything new in this book so far, but I do appreciate hearing about these studies in a different context. So for example, the idea that our minds are possibly more active when we're not concentrating on a task or when we're letting our minds wander that was something I had heard before somewhere, and I can't remember where. <laughs> um, and uh, that, that that was actually really interesting to think about how he relates that to reading a book and how when you're reading a book, you might see the word butterfly and your mind might wander on butterflies and then suddenly you realize you're not paying attention anymore to what you're reading. And that definitely happens to, to me from time to time. And I was just talking about this to a family member last weekend. And he was saying that was why he can't read very well, because he can't concentrate very well. And this person was actually making the case that doing that actually helps you ground into the story and relate to the story and bring your own context into the story. So it actually helps your reading experience. You just have to learn how to do it in a strategic way, I suppose, so that you're not totally losing focus 100%. But doing that a little bit is okay. And it was cool though, because he also talks about Chick Sent Me High, which is the author of Flow. And I did that Flow video a few weeks ago and he actually got to meet him. And I thought that was cool because after doing that Flow video, I found out that that author of Flow died last year. And so that was pretty impressive to learn a little bit more about him in Stolen Focus. Uh, anyway, it's an interesting book. The author, it does, say straightforward that he is not an expert in the field. He has talked to a lot of experts and, you know, dug up some studies to relate to this topic. So I think that's important to know going in because obviously the emotional appeal of 
Why he's so passionate about this story is largely anecdotal according to his own experience and his son's experience and people he's talked to in his close circles. But I have had questions about, about that, how far reaching what he's talking about actually is. And I'm sure I'll learn more as I read on. So anyway, still in focus. And that's about it as far as what I've been reading. Aside from all of that, I had a wonderful why read discussion at the beginning of the month with Alan and Tori. So you can check that out. Although it's nearly four hours long. I didn't mean it to go quite that long and I hope Tori will forgive me for that because she was recovering from illness and I know her voice was um, still recovering as well and it just kind of unexpectedly kept going but it was a lot of fun and I loved talking with both of them and then um, aside from that I do have another Why Read episode this Saturday with Michael from Fit to be Read and Jonathan from Words in Time. So it'll have a bit of a sci-fi theme and I'm so excited to talk with both of them. Those two I've wanted to have on the show for a while and I think it's perfect in the summer because I always associate summer with sci-fi even though I don't have any sci-fi in my reading plans right now. I do want to read more sci-fi and I am excited to talk with them more about the topic. Hey everybody, I just learned that Cormac McCarthy passed away at the age of 89 and I just wanted to say something because I've been gushing about him pretty much every other video since the start of this year. Well, actually, at, since the end of last year, ever since um, reading Blood Meridian, thanks to Jimmy from the Fantasy Network and Buddy reading the Border Trilogy with Jimmy. But what a loss. What a gifted writer. What a unique voice who understood the human condition and was able to speak about it in a way that no other person could. I'm grateful that... I got reacquainted with his books, but I'm also really grateful that the literary world acknowledged his gifts before his passing. And my heart goes out to all his fans, his friends, his family, to anyone who was touched by his books, and wishing you all peace at this time. So that is it for now. Um, please let me know how your month is going so far, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. <music>